Welcome to the EasyWeb training video showing how to add a video recording into your website. This video will show how to resize the original movie, how to upload it as unlisted to YouTube, and how to paste the code that runs the video into your website. Looking on my desktop, we can see the video I'm wanting to work with. It's from St. James Hull Learning Academy. And if I place my mouse over that video, you can see from the pop-up information, the size is 348 megabytes and lasts for 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So we want to reduce that size significantly before we upload to YouTube. So the first thing I want to ask is, do you have a copy on your computer of the Windows Movie Maker? This is free software that is shipped by Microsoft. It's very effective at what it does and it will accept a whole variety of movie types and naturally resize them, still maintaining a very good quality so that the video can stream quickly and efficiently from the YouTube cloud via your website. Now I launch Movie Maker from a shortcut on my taskbar. As you can see, I've got all kinds of shortcuts set up on my taskbar for quick launching. However, you may not have that facility available to you. I'm using Windows 10. So if I wanted to see if I'd got Movie Maker installed on my machine, I would simply click on my start button and I would start typing. Windows Movie Maker. And as you can see, when it's finished doing the search, there it is sitting waiting for me to click to launch the app. Now you may not have Windows 10, you may have Windows 7 or 8, and you may have to do different types of searches to find out if you have Movie Maker. If you haven't got Movie Maker, then all you need to do is go onto your browser, whether that's Bing or any other type of um, search engine, and type in download Windows Movie Maker. And as you can see, I have a couple of places from which I can do that from this search. You'll notice that these links are at windows.microsoft.com, then the English is Great Britain, Windows Get Movie Maker Download, or windows.microsoft.com, English US, Windows Movie Maker. And so just look carefully at the different links that do appear, but I would always go for a Microsoft.com site to get the actual free download from. Then all you would need to do is to click and click the get it now and then download that version and it will work nicely on your website. Once you've opened up Movie Maker and got it running, then all you need to do is add your video to Movie Maker. And as you can see, it then tells me Movie Maker is preparing your files. So just wait until this bar runs right the way across. And that means that your movie is ready to be resized. Whilst it's doing that, you'll see there's a whole load of different output items available. And if you wanted to, you could post straight to YouTube. However, what I prefer to do is I prefer to go to the OneDrive cloud. I do this specifically because this enables me to pick up that resized video from the hard disk and I can therefore keep it as an extra copy that has been resized and isn't such a cumbersome size for your network because obviously you'll still want to keep the original video that you have made. So as you can see here is the timeline of the video and I can now if I wanted to I could add more videos or I could begin to actually work on this video if I wanted to add effects or cut bits off etc. However I don't want to do that I simply want to output this. So if I click on OneDrive now, it immediately gives me a list of recommendations of different size outputs that this movie can be turned into. And each size output 
has also a file size to go with the size of the frame that the movie will be viewed within. And as you can see, as the frame size gets larger, so the output size also gets larger. The one it recommends is the 854 x 480 and that will give me an estimated size of 56 megabytes, which is a huge drop down from the 300 plus megabytes of the original movie. So I'm going to choose the recommended one. The next thing to do is to give it a very quick name. So I'm just going to put St. James Learning. And then I'm going to click the publish. Straight away, Movie Maker will tell you how many steps there are to take, which is here one of three, and it will show you the percentage complete of the process that needs to take place in order for the movie to be made. So once it's actually completed making the new movie for you, based on your original raw data movie that you've taken, a small little pop-up window will appear where it says you can watch your movie online or open the folder on your computer that contains a copy of it. So we need to click on this open the folder and that will give us access to the resized file that we're going to upload ourselves manually to our YouTube unlisted account. So click on open folder and immediately it highlights an MP4 file. Now you'll notice in this original file that we had here, it was a .mov file. So it not only has it resized it from being 348 megabytes in size, as you can see just here, and brought it right the way down to 57 and a half megabytes in size, but it also has now got an MP4 movie, which is compatible for our YouTube account over and above a .mov movie, which is a less versatile file output type. So I'm now going to click and drag the My Movie onto my desktop. And there it is. I'm going to close this window down. And I'm now going to close also Movie Maker down. And I'm not going to actually save any of the Movie Maker file setup. I don't need it. I've now got my movie and that's all that matters. So here's my original and it says St. James's Learning Journey. I'm going to just copy that. I'm going to paste that into there. If, if you wanted to, you could do a right mouse click and just choose the rename option. If you wanted to do it that way and type it in, I've just copied and pasted the actual text because this is a .mov and this is a .mp4 so these two files can have the same name on my desktop and Windows will differentiate between them because of the file ending of .mov or .mp4. So now I've got my new renamed .mp4 file. I'm going to log into my YouTube account so I'm going to visit my browser again and I'm going to go on to the next tab which is set at www.google.co.uk and you can see there is a sign in button and also a Google Apps menu. So after I've signed in to this account, I'm then going to click on the Google Apps and I'm going to choose the YouTube account. So whilst I sign in, I'm just going to pause this video. So here we are at the home page of St. James Primary School YouTube channel where we have all of our options such as visiting the channel or any subscriptions or any history of viewing. And here are some recommended videos to watch based on past educational videos that have been viewed through this channel. However, we're only interested specifically in this upload button because this is the button we're going to use to upload our MP4 file, which is on our desktop. So let's do that now. Going to click upload and I'm going to make sure even before I start that I choose unlisted and that means that the video will not be able to be found 
at all by anyone coming onto YouTube and doing a search for it. If you forget to put this on at the very start, you can change it later on. But it's always good to start off as a number one point to make sure that it is set as unlisted and that keeps the video private to the primary school. So now that I've got the privacy settings as unlisted, I'm going to click on Select Files to Upload. My window is showing my desktop. And if your window is defaulted to anywhere else, then all you'll need to do is to be able to browse to your desktop in order to find the file that you're looking for. So here's my St. James Learning Journey .mp4 file. It's the one that's 58 megabytes in size. Click open. And you'll be able to see right at the top here an uploading option. You'll also be able to see uh, this is the basic information. And here is the drop down menu which determines whether the video will be unlisted or not. So if you forgot to choose unlisted when you were first uploading and you left it at public, this is the drop down menu to put it back to being unlisted again. Now put in a short description. and put in some tags. Now, I'm going to go over to advanced settings. Whilst this is still progressing and still uploading, I'm going to go over to the advanced settings and leaving basic information behind. And I'm going to take away the ability for comments to be added. I'm going to leave users can view ratings this video. You can take that off if you want to. I'm quite happy to leave that on. And we need to leave allow embedding, otherwise we can't embed this video ourselves. Good to take notify subscribers off. You can leave that on if somebody wants to subscribe to following your YouTube account. And now we have everything on here that we've actually needed to do. So the main thing to do here is to take away the comments and you can decide whether this and this are to be ticked or not. Go back to basic information. Just check that everything is still correct. And then we can click done if we want to. Or we can just simply wait for this processing to finish. And as soon as it's finished, we'll see the options change. OK, so now you can see that the text has changed to say processing done. And our little information is now click done to confirm. So we're going to click on done. And immediately it gives us the ability to share or to embed. So if I click on embed, it gives me a code. And this is the code that I want to paste into our website. So it's already highlighted in blue. So I'm going to right mouse click anywhere in this blue. And then I'm going to choose copy. That immediately gives me the code that I now need so that this video can be viewed on our website. So I'm going to minimize that out of the way and I'm now going to go to a different web browser. You can see it in the same web browser if you want to but in this web browser here is St. James Church of England Academy and as you can see from this top black bar I am already logged into the website. If I scroll down a little bit, what I've already done is I've clicked on the login at the very bottom and via the login page logged in and that normally takes you to the dashboard. I've simply at the dashboard 
clicked back onto St James Academy to come back to the front page. So I now have to add a post so that this can appear inside the School Life blog feed. So the post will appear just here. And if I had a specific web page set aside for videos, then the post would also appear in there as well. So I'm going to go to the new menu, just hover my mouse and click on post. Or what I could do is I could go to the dashboard and then from there, from the post menu, choose add post as well. But I'm going to do it from here. So I'm going to hover my mouse and click on post. Now I want to add a title that is a copy of the name to do with the video itself. So just as a reminder, let me just minimize this browser out the way. The name was Learning Journey. So back to here and I'm going to type in Learning Journey. And I'm going to go down to the body area where we normally add our text. So for example, if we were adding a newsletter, we would type just here, click on the attachment below to view our newsletter and we would go to the add media button and go and find our newsletter and bring it in here and then publish it. We're going to behave in a slightly different way, however. Now that I'm down here, I'm going to go over to the text area, the text tab. And this enables me to see the body area of my post but as in pure text or pure code. The reason why I've done this is because I now want to right mouse click and paste that code that we picked up from our YouTube account. So here's the code that helps our post display the video that was created at the youtube.com account. So if I click back on visual again, you'll see that we have a video object created by that code. Now, the thing to remember is that I want this to go onto the general blog, so it will appear on the front page. Please also note that if you have a page set aside for video learning or video teaching or as a, a children's video blog, that I will have created for you another category for you to tick. And that category that you tick will ensure so for example, we have pupil blog here. So if I have pupil blog ticked and I have general blog ticked, this will ensure that the video appears on that front page general blog newsfeed, that school life newsfeed. But it will also appear on the pupil blog page video newsfeed. Right. Now all I have to do is click Publish. And the page refreshes itself. And we know that it's refreshed itself because we can still see the central part of the body where the video is and the Publish button has turned into an Update button. Now I can go back and I can visit to the website, so I can click on St. James Academy, which will take me back to the front page. And as you can see, here is the learning. And I'm going to click on this St. James learning video. And the video starts and the children can be seen from there. We can go on to the full screen. and continue from there as well. And if also I want to go and visit the news and the blog page, we can see the video has also appeared on the blog page. And again, if we had a pupil page, then the video would also appear there. And that's how to add an unlisted YouTube video into your website. Thanks for watching.